Alright, it's been a while since I made a, uh, a build video and actually talked about it, but uh, you know, we've been playing through this uh, non proc test for the last three weeks and uh, you know, I've been running this build in my Stamden and then I, you know, if we're going to be stuck with this for another six months, I thought I'd go ahead and share my build and, and let y'all know what I've been doing. Um, This is a kind of a solo or small scale build. Um, I've mainly played it just uh, you know going around solo, um, not necessarily one VX, but you know just uh, trying to find smaller fights where I can. Maybe there's you know one or two friendlies and then a handful of opponents. It works really well one v one. Of course, with a uh, you know one v two, you have to kite a little bit and. And, and you, you know how it goes. You need to, to move around and, and, and try to just focus one person down at a time. But uh, it's pretty strong. It has uh, some very nice uh, health recovery. And uh, it's, it's been working pretty well, so that's why I wanted to share it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any clips for you. Uh, I haven't really been saving those along the way because I thought, you know, I'm just out here having fun. And... Uh, I didn't even think to record anything because I thought it would just be a three week test and that's it. But here we are looking at six more months of this stuff. So, not terribly excited about six months of this, but, uh, you know, it, it could be interesting if they added a few more sets and, and, you know, let us theory craft a little bit more, you know. That, but it is what it is. Let's uh, start off with uh, with gear. Well, let, let's look at stats first. This is unbuffed right now. I'm just standing here, and if you look at Cyrodiil, DC was kind enough to PV door the map, so I don't have any Cyrodiil buff either. Cyrodiil buffs either. So, uh, just uh, as I am right now, 13k Magicka, 31k health, 28k stamina. On my back bar, I'm running poisons there. Um, stand recovery is 1229. Uh, health recovery is 3044. And mag recovery is just basic. There's nothing affecting that. Weapon damage is at uh, 1947. Doesn't sound like a whole lot. It actually is enough to get the job done on a warden because our native damage skills and our toolkit are all basically strong enough to do the damage uh, as long as we can line up our burst properly that uh, you know we don't have to be running like 4k weapon damage necessarily um, to be able to secure kills and uh, you know, my resistance is you know I'm not too worried about resi resistance in this build but uh, they're, they're not terrible 19k and that's on buff so I'll, I'll get my armor buff on top of that and then I'm running a couple in pen, so it's, it's like 1700 grit resist. So, um, first set I'm wearing, this is on both bars, five pieces of beekeeper. This is a stacking health and health recovery. Um, didn't really consider golding this out as, uh, you know, it was only a three week test, so I was like, I'll just run purple, everything, gold my weapons, and, and you know, that's, that's cool. But, uh, you know, I might gold these out, I don't know. I, need, uh, I might actually worry a little bit more about the traits, too. This one, uh, I have a well-fitted helm. I have a Divine Securus, uh, Impenetrable Pauldron, Divine Greaves, and Divine Sabatons. So. Um, pretty pretty good set. That's, a, that's actually a lot of health recovery, and it, it, it all stacks up nicely. The, the extra health is nice. Cause that makes us tankier, of course, and uh, like I said, it's been it's been a pretty pretty strong build. Uh, jewelry, I'm running uh, one Spriggan jewelry, infused with stamina recovery. One endurance jewelry, infused with stamina and recovery, and one uh, another en endurance jewelry, two endur endurance jewelry total, uh, one with weapon damage. All three infused. Um, 
one rep of damage, two stand recovery. Okay. And then two uh, spriggan on the body. These are both impenetrable because that's what I had, and I didn't want to go farm anything because the you know the prices were going up pretty quickly for spriggan, and uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money doing that. Um, and then I have a, a Spriggan's Battle Axe in my front bar. I'm on my back bar now, so notice I only have three items active. So I'm only running Spriggan on front bar, which, you know, if you know you just want that on your damage bar. You just want that penetration and that weapon damage on your damage bar. You don't really need it on your back bar. And then uh, for my weapons on the back bar, I'm running Sword and Board, as you can see. The third piece of endurance. So on my back bar, that will give me the extra 600 recovery from that. And uh, I'm running a powered weapon just for the extra healing. Um, could do uh, Nern Honed here. Um, just depends. I think powered is a little bit stronger as far as boosting your your heal, but uh, it could go either way, really. And then I have uh, one piece of trainee in the back bar. This is a nice little piece, Targoth Shield. It's a damed item, so you don't have to retrade it. It drops as reinforced, which is a nice shield trait. Uh, so that makes us really tanky in our back bar. And uh, plus, running this extra health in the back bar. Uh, most of you probably know where I'm going with this, but uh, there we go, Arctic Blast. That's going to scale off of our max health. And so running the extra health in the back bar will, will boost the, uh, the, the healing that this does whenever we use it, which is nice. So, we won't have as much health on the front bar, but, uh, you know, this will make our Arctic Blast a little bit stronger as a result. I see a lot of people with their, their, their endurance and their uh, trainee, they get them in the wrong place. A lot of people I see running two endurance, or, or one endurance, and then a trainee here, and then the two more endurance here which is fine, it works, but I like having the two endurance jewelry because that means I'm, I still have that same, that, that 2k health in the front bar, not just in the back bar. Um, I've seen a lot of builds and I've commented on other people's videos saying, you know, you could switch that up and still have your strong heal in the back bar with uh, the Arctic Blast, but uh, anyway. I mean, there, there's different ways to set it up. This is how I prefer it. I like the the two endurance active front bar, and then pick up the third one plus the trainee on the back bar, just for the, the extra health recovery and the extra uh, health for the uh, Arctic Arctic Blast heal. So anyway, so that's gear, um, skills. Um, now for back bar, this is a uh, pretty pretty standard stuff. You know, you have your Ice Fortress for your major armor buff and your minor protection. I'm running Living, or sorry, Leeching Vines. I forgot. I, anyway. Uh, I barely got that morphed. And uh, I've been trying out some different things in that slot. I think Leeching Vines is probably the best way to go because it actually allows you to uh, put minor lifesteal on your Opponents, which is uh, you know nice to get that little bit extra healing, and um, plus the the uh, the extra healing every time you take damage uh, over that 10 second period, um, and it, it's not too much magic. It's only 2,700, so it's not a terrible cost there. Um, we do have to be careful with our magic. Like I said, we only have like 13k. This is non-CP. I meant I probably should have said that a lot sooner. I meant non-CP. Um, so we have three, this is, we really just have three magicka skills here. There's a fourth one on the front bar, but as you might expect. Um, Ice Fortress, which, uh, at least that one's a 24 second buff, so we don't have to cast it too much. Uh, this is a 10 second buff, and then we'll need, you know, Arctic Blast. We'll want to definitely save some magicka for that one if we get into a situation. Uh, but it's a, it's a pretty big heal, the way that the character has been set up. Running uh, Resolving Vigor, of course. Um, this is where having the, the powered 
um, weapon on the back bar helps because this is our three primary heals right here the leeching vines, the arctic blast, and the, the resolving vigor bull netch of course and then I have healing ticket here, you probably could run spell wall instead and that might actually be better uh, most of the time in fighting I don't even use this uh, slot uh, usually I use a, just a Dawnbreaker on the front bar. Um, I think, and I haven't learned it yet, unfortunately, I think uh, Spell Wall would probably be a much better option here. And um, it gives you some different flexibility. Uh, we are running Sword and Board, though, so it, it does remain an option. Um, I don't know. Uh, we could probably, if you wanted to, also run uh, Northern Storm or Permafrost here if you wanted to. So that would be a little bit more of a, def you know, Perma especially would be more of a defensive ult with the 12 seconds of Major Protection, but Major Protection has been nerfed so much, I don't know if it's actually worth it at this point. Uh, in that case, Spell Wall, probably a little bit better. Um, anyway, um, we have some different options here, but that, that's really up to the whoever whoever's playing, when, you know, what you prefer. Front bar, and uh, let me change this out real quick. I was messing around with something last night. Uh, running Cutting Dive instead of uh, Dizzy. Um, Dizzy is uh, kind of, you know, you, you all know how it is. It, it's kind of hit or miss as far as uh, landing Dizzy. So um, I, I was kind of experimenting with uh, running uh, the Cutting Dive instead, which it does, Cutting Dive does less damage, of course, but it has that bleed attached to it, also sets people off balance, and it is a ranged ability, so it's a little bit easier to land. Um, so if you can, you can stack a couple of them together, it's about as strong, but not quite, unfortunately. Uh, and the, the fact that it's also a um, um, animal companion's ability also boosts our damage by by three percent. So. There it is. 2% uh, per for each animal companion ability. So, right now I have two skills here. We could add a third one and that would make it 6% uh, bonus damage. But uh, So, so there, there is some reason to that. You know, putting Cunning Dive there instead of Dizzying. But Dizzying is just so strong, unfortunately. It has, uh, you know, the, every other attack also does a stun, basically. Uh, if you can land them successfully, get your medium weaved in between, and, and then then, it, then it's just really strong. But again, if it gets any kind of lag, it's 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 not as reliable, unfortunately. So I was just kind of messing around with cutting dive. So I think you could go either way with that. Um, it's really just a matter of preference at that point. Uh, dizzying swing, swing works, as we know, but uh, works against some players better than others. So. Uh, but uh, here I'm running, of course, Sub Assault, Dizzing, Executioner, Bird of Prey, and then uh, Forward Momentum, and then, of course, Dawnbreaker. So, pretty standard front bar there for Wardens. Um, forward Momentum is nice. Th that's our uh, snare removal since we're, we are in 5 heavy and 2 medium. Uh, we can't run Shuffle, of course, but honestly, this is a little bit better because it also gives us the minor endurance buff we're not running a lot of stam recovery but uh, when we start stacking minor and major endurance uh, we can actually get a pretty decent amount of stam recovery and, and, and on top of our uh, uh, netch you know we, we sustain just fine in this build so that's that's the nice thing there so we want to make sure we keep that up and then of course use it if we get uh, rooted or whatever um, So that, that's really nice. Um, you can tell I didn't, I haven't, I've only very recently morphed it also, but uh, I got it mor morphed in time for this test, so it actually is working really nicely. Um, so yeah, the standard, you know, burst combo, throw out your sub assault, a couple of D swings in with uh, medium weave, and then uh, Dawnbreaker if you need to, or you can just go into Executioner, depending on your opponent. Uh, if they're Potato, you probably don't need to da Dawnbreaker them. But if they're a better player, you might want to. So. 
Anyway, that's our skill still set up. Let's uh, look at buff stats. Uh, buff stats. Sorry. Um, one other thing, uh, I am running a uh, weapon damage enchant on the front bar, so that is going to uh, boost our weapon damage in combat uh, versus what we see here. So with minor toughness, now we have 34k health in the back bar. So that means our Arctic Blast is now even stronger. 11k and then uh, so on. I think that's before Battle Spirit. There's an armor buff. That. And look at what we have. So this is front bar now. We're running three th 31k health. Uh, almost 2800 weapon damage. We're not worried about crit, apparently. Um, and then 1400 stam recovery. And 21.5 spell resistance. It just wore off. Now if we drink a potion on top of that, front bar that gives us that we're now up to 3,100 health recovery, 1,800 stam recovery. This is really nice right here. And um, going to the back bar, our, our health recovery is now 4k. So we're running 4k health recovery back bar. That's with uh, the major fortitude that we get from our potion, because we're running uh, the primary potion is uh, the uh, immovability, so it's health, stamina, and uh, immune to knockback and disabling effects for 10 seconds. Um, but again, that gives us uh, the 40% health recovery and the 40% stam recovery, which was buffed in uh, you know, one or you know a couple of patches ago, which has uh, actually been really nice. Um, so that's actually really nice on the the back bar because now with that potion active, this jumps all the way up to 4k health recovery, and so we get uh, that going with our vigor and our uh, arctic blast, and we have lines active. Makes us really tanky. It makes us be ab able to sustain our health really well. Okay. You know, we just make sure we keep minor toughness up, keep our natch up, keep our forward momentum up. That's with anything. It's just maintaining buffs. So, Warden does have a lot of buffs to maintain, but uh, it's actually you know, we know it's a really strong class. But anyway. Um, this is the uh, the build setup. Um, see everything wearing off again. I am using the Steed Mundus. That's to st uh, stack the extra health recovery, and I'm using the uh, Bewitched Sugar Skulls as the food, of course. So that gives us the extra health recovery as well. That's why we're able to st stack that health recovery so high. Is between Steed and the and the food, and then. Uh, the two sets on the back bar that both buff our, our health recovery, the uh, the beekeeper plus endurance. Uh, that's a lot of health sustained, which is nice. So anyway, um, did I forget anything here? Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I, I tried to make a parallel build for my Magicka characters, which is basically beekeeper still with uh, magic and chance instead of stamina. Uh, spinners, so five heavy, two light. Spinners, two piece here, ring, and then the either a lightning or fire staff, depending on the class. On uh, front bar, I did lightning for uh, Magden and Magplar, and then I did uh, fire for uh, Mag DK, um, and then endurance and and Targos shield, uh, the the one trainee piece on the back bar, so. Actually worked pretty well for Mag Warden. Just switching uh, sp Spriggans to Spinners and then and then ma Magic Enchants instead of Stamina Enchants. And then instead of uh, running Stamina Recovery and Weapon Damage, I actually did uh, Magic at Cost Reduction. Two of those, uh, e either three of those or two plus a damage. Worked really well for Magden. 
was not as good for Mag Templar. Mag Templar and uh, Mag Templar and Magden actually ran Atronach instead of uh, Steed because uh, Magplar I could put uh, Repentance on back bar and get the minor Fortitude buff for the extra 20% uh, uh, recovery. And it actually had about the same health recovery and, and I was able to sustain a little bit better with the Atronach instead of the Steed. Um, and then for um, Mag DK, it worked all right. It worked all right because Mag DK gets major fortitude just from running, coagulating. Um, and I was actually also running, um, I think I was running Atronach instead of Steed there also. Uh, you know, Mag DK is a very stationary class anyway, so S S Steed is not going to solve all their problems as far as movement goes. Um, it was it was all right. It was all right. Uh, this is certainly a better stamina build than a, than a, the the Magicka version would be with the spinners. But uh, I was able to to do some stuff with it. I haven't haven't uh, worked with it nearly as much. But like I said, I did like it on Magden. That was that was actually pretty interesting how that worked out. Um, Magden, of course, you have to run a fire staff and run. Uh, I think I said lightning pour. I did run fire on Magden because I wanted. Uh, Fire Clinch as a CC. Um, had a really long duel with a, a pretty good Nightblade opponent last night. That was nice. Uh, I was able to win that one. Um, but yeah, this is a, like I said, no CP, no proc build. And you can adapt it for Magicka or Stamina. I think it does absolutely work better on Stamina, though. Uh, you could probably do this on uh, Stam DK pretty easily. Uh, but it, the problem is that the, the the warden has I think it warden has innately more class based damage with the uh, in the class based burst with the uh, sub assault that it, it works so much better on warden than it would uh, other uh, well probably would probably work on stam crow pretty well because you can just do your blast bones the same way we use uh, sub assault uh, anyway so just something I've been using wanted to throw that out there and. Uh, Hopefully, if someone finds it interesting, uh, maybe you're able to do something with it that uh, you even better than what I've been able to do with it. I've actually enjoyed it quite a bit and got a ton of AP with it so far. Um, but I just wanted to, to let you all know what I was up to here with this stuff, as far as uh, running around small scale and and uh, you know trying out the no procs and no CP. So uh, let me know if y'all have any questions and and if, you know whether you're able to enjoy some a build like this or similar. Um, normally I would run, instead of Beekeeper, I would be running Eternal Vigor in this setup. Uh, but this actually works pretty well. I don't know if I would, like if procs were active, I don't know if I would use Spriggans necessarily, but it's actually a pretty nice set for this, uh, this setup. Uh, and I'm running, also, I'm running a Battle Axe, at least before the patch. I don't know what I'm going to do after the patch, might change to great sword because um, the the heavy weapons passive is changing for two hand so something to think about anyway thank you all for watching y'all have a good day